Hi everyone, it's Mr. Shell from the guidance office uh, coming to you today to talk to you about all things freshmen. Normally I come into the classroom this time of year and talk to you about the upcoming midterm, which is October the 2nd, uh, about the upcoming uh, rest of your first quarter and how important grades are. And um, I'll come in again later on and talk about the importance of exams and things of that nature. But the first visit is usually a pretty informal one, answering any questions that you may have. This time as I go through this, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot the ER code that's hanging throughout the building and I will happily uh, call you down to the office and we will get you taken care of, get your questions answered, or you can email me. Uh, that's probably the fastest way to do it. Just shoot me an email and I'll answer any questions that you have uh, regarding the freshman year so far, okay? Um, so I'm gonna just go ahead and continue on with this and, and we'll go through it and try and keep it as short as I possibly can um, so that you don't have to watch a ginormous long video. Okay, things to remember, you're not in this alone. Everybody's in the same boat, guys. Um, we're all here two days a week and then three days home. Teachers are here all five days of the week, but every student is here um, two days and then they're home for three. Just because you're home doesn't mean you're not working. You have to be working from home. And this can be something that's a little bit overwhelming. It's overwhelming to everybody, okay? If you feel that way, please reach out to your teachers. If there's a question that you have on a Tuesday, and you're a Monday, Tuesday student, don't wait till the following Monday to ask that question. Wait no longer than 15 minutes and shoot an email out to that teacher. And then that teacher can get back to you within 24 hours and you'll have that question answered. Same thing if you're a Thursday, Friday student. If you have a question on a Friday, don't wait until the following Thursday to ask that question. Request, a, request a, uh, an answer from a teacher through email, request a Zoom meeting, we are here on Wednesdays, even though no students are. Um, we've had lots of students come in already on Wednesdays for some extra one-on-one -on -one attention and some help. All of that is available for you. All you need to do is reach out and ask for it, okay? Your attendance matters. Because we're only here two days a week, physically, um, those two days, there are lots of uh, information that goes out, not only about what you're doing in the class, but also about what's coming up on your three days where you're virtually working. So you need to be here in attendance on those two days. It's extremely important. On the days that you're working virtually, it's extremely important that you're logging in and working, okay? Very important that you're getting your things done. If you're a PLP student, it's important that you're logging in 40 minutes per class per day. That's what we're doing here at Ross. That's what you should be doing at home. So your PLP students, those all virtual online learners should be spending 40 minutes per class per day working on their assignments. Stay on top of your work, don't fall behind because at Ross, we have no last minute Hail Mary passes to help catch you up at the end of the quarter. You may be used to that from the middle school. Two days before the end of the quarter, teacher pulls out all the missing assignments, passes them out and says, finish these up, we'll get them in the grade book, everybody passes, yay, it's a wonderful moment. Doesn't happen like that here at Ross, okay? Once you are two days to three days beyond that, um, assignments turn in date, that assignment is no longer able to be turned in. So there is no last minute chances to catch up and turn in missing assignments, okay? Be aware of that um, and do not fall behind because when you fall behind, it, it, it becomes a snowball and it gets bigger and bigger and then before you know it, it's almost too hard to, to dig out of that hole um, that you put yourself into, okay? I've also shared with you a link for the class of 2024 Google Classroom. That is for your class, your graduating class. It will go out. I will have um, information in there. There's no homework ever assigned in there, but it's just information. Videos that I may send, some, uh, some study tips, things like that, they may be interesting to you. I will put into the Google Classroom and you can just check it. So just check it once a week or so and, and see how that goes, okay? And if there's any information in there, Read through it. If you can use it, great. If you can't, no big deal. Um, check it again the following week and see if there's something new in there that you might want. Okay, next up, your graduation audit sheet, all right? That looks something like this, all right? And this is everything that you need to graduate from Fremont Ross High School. Not only do you have to take the class English 9, you also have to pass the class English 9 because if you don't, you will have to retake it in credit recovery. Okay, so four years of English, 
four years of math, including algebra two, three years of science, three years of social studies. You're in his world history now, you'll take US history as a sophomore, government as a junior or a senior. If you need to take health, you'll do that as a sophomore. You've got two quarter credits of phys ed that you need to take, Little Giant Pathways. Most of you are taking that now. If not now, you'll take it second semester. And then fine art, one credit of that. Fine art is also any music or orchestra classes would count as a fine art, okay? All of these equal up to, with your electives, 21 and a half credits. Very important that you have 21 and a half credits, including all of these requirements that I have already gone through, okay? Once you've required, once you've reached all those requirements, then you also have to do a couple other things, which I'm going to get into next, okay? So a couple other things that you need to do um, for, let me pull that up real quick. I got to go over here. I'm sorry. I'm talking out loud for no reason here. This is what we need to graduate in the state of Ohio based on the Ohio Department of Education. As you see, first cover the basics. We just did on the previous slide, okay? Your four years of English, your math, your science, social studies. This is saying that you need four English, half credit of health, math. You see no fine art here. We require that at Ross. So this says 20 credits, but we at Ross require 21 and a half including Little Giant Pathways, including the fine art. So those are in addition to what you have here. Once you've covered the basics, you second ha secondly have to, you'll be taking a test in algebra and in English. You'll do algebra one in your freshman year, and you'll do English two in your sophomore year. If you pass both of those classes, or both of those tests, I'm sorry, then the third thing you'll need to do is get two of these seals. There's lots of seals to choose from, Three of them are local, which means if you're social engagement seal, that's, that's being participants in extracurricular activities. A certain number of extracurricular activities will get you this seal. And, and we'll be having more details coming to you about each of these seals and what you need to do to earn them, okay? Um, if you got the science seal, for example, that would simply be take the science test and pass it and you get the science seal. So that's easily able to happen. If you enlist in, enlist in the military, you get the military enlistment seal. So there's all kinds of seals you can get. You only need two of them. So to graduate, cover the basics, pass these two tests, and do two seals, simple. If you can't pass the tests because you're just not a good test taker, you have other options. You can get an industry credential through Vanguard. You can enlist in the military. You can complete college coursework over through Terra. So one of these three options, along with the obvious basic first step and two seals. So there is different paths you can take to graduate from Ross High School, okay? That's all I'm saying. And hopefully, um, if you have any other questions on this, this is, you can get this through the Ohio Board of Education, or I have copies in my office. You can shoot me the QR code and I can get you a copy easy enough, not a problem. Okay, um, next, there we go, your academic honors diploma. Let's go back, I wanna make sure I didn't miss something. Okay, now we're good. So the academic honors diploma, if you would like to get an honors diploma, something you should start working on right now uh, because the requirements are four, four years of math, four years of science, including two advanced science, four social studies, all of these things you're already started to work on now as Ross freshman. Three years of a foreign language. This is something that if you haven't taken a foreign language yet as a freshman, you're going to have to start that next year, okay? So you need three credits of either Spanish or French, or if you take foreign language at Terra, you could take, you could take German, you could take Italian, you could take nine language, whatever you would like to take. If it's offered through Terra, you can take it over there. And that would count for our honors diploma. A fine arts, you will need to have a 3.5 on a four point scale. So those things are all things that you must have if you would like to graduate with an honors diploma. Now, what does an honors diploma give you? Nothing really uh, special. It used to give you a, a, a bit of a, um, uh, like a scholarship, like a $500 scholarship, but it no longer does that. The state of Ohio ran out of money for that. So basically you get a sticker on your diploma 
But what it does do is it uh, shows that any class or any uh, universities that you may want to go to eventually down the road, um, they're going to look at an honors diploma uh, with a little bit more weight than just a regular diploma that you would earn from high school. Okay, that's your academic honors diploma. So how do we figure grades? You may be wondering. And again, if I'm going fast, it's because I'm trying to keep this video short. You can pause it at any time and and reread what I'm going over or rewind it if you didn't catch what I said. Um, grades are determined at the end of each nine weeks, but our credits are determined at the end of each semester. And here's how it works. All of your credits are given point values. So if you get an A, it's worth two. A B is worth one and a half, C one, five, point five for D and zero for F. And if it's a quarter credit class, it's worth half of that, okay? So when you are after averaging out your grades, your example would be if you got an A in math class, it's worth two and it's a half credit. Science, you got a B that's worth one and a half and so on down the line. So if you add all these, notice that A in phys ed is only worth one, where an A in art is worth two. That's because remember, phys ed is only worth a quarter credit, so it's worth half the amount. You take the credits, you add up the credits, that equals 2.75 in this case. Add up the points, equals 9.5 in this case. You divide those two numbers, and that comes up with your 3.45 GPA. So that's how we figure GPAs here at Ross High School. There are no pluses, there are no minuses. If you're a student athlete, be aware that you have to be enrolled in and passing a minimum, minimum of five classes that are half credit. Physical education is a quarter credit and does not count towards eligibility, okay? It does count if you fail it as one of the Fs because you cannot fail more than one class, okay? You must have a minimum of 1.5 GPA. So your phys ed does consider factor into the GPA and it does factor into the failing of classes, but it does not figure into the number of classes that are half credit, okay? Eligibility is based on your quarter grades. So if you wanted to be a participant in the winter sports, whether it be basketball or swimming or wrestling, those sports are based on what you earn in the first quarter. You have to have five classes passed, all being at least half credits, a higher 1.5 or higher GPA and not failing more than one class. So if you're taking five classes and you fail one, you're ineligible, even if you got A's and everything else. If you're taking six classes and you fail one and it's in the six classes phys ed, you'd be ineligible because you're only passing four because phys ed is only a quarter credit. I hope that makes sense. This is Sloopy. She's our therapy dog here at Ross. She comes to school on Mondays and Fridays during the hybrid. Once we are back full time, she will come back full time. She lives here in my office with me during the school day. Um, you're welcome to come down and visit her. I will try and have her in the hallways more frequently so that you guys can just get a little bit of a pet here and there if that's what you need. But again, if you want to just schedule a time to come and see Sloop for a little bit, shoot the QR code and I will try and get you out of the study hall and you can check her out and see what you what you think about old sloopy okay college planning so we're gonna we're working on college planning right now i'm trying to get the there we go Let me bring this back over to here the college board has a great website where when you log in you can learn all kinds of things about yourself um for example if i clicked on know yourself this would pop up and i can it'll ask me questions about me and it'll get me thinking about college. There's all kinds of great videos, how you can balance your low grades when you're applying, how you can get your career interests, grades may be too low to go to college, maybe not. They're gonna, there's a video on here that will tell you exactly what to do to, to improve your grades and, and, and not to worry in certain cases, and maybe it's time to worry in other cases. So all kinds of things to know yourself, find colleges, explore careers, pay for college, all of those things are available to you on this website, bigfuturecollegeboard.org, okay? Let me get off of that. So there's college in your future if you would want it there. We are preparing you at Ross High School for everyone to go to college, but everyone doesn't have to go to college. And if college is not for everyone. There's great paying jobs out there in the industry um, a service industry, in the skills trades industry, 
lots of amazing paying jobs with great benefits. Going to college is going to cost you money. Many of you will go into debt for college, and that's okay as long as you come out of college um, and you're able to get a job that can help you pay that debt off. If you go to college and you major in, for example, philosophy, um, and you spend $80,000 on a philosophy degree, uh, coming out of college with a philosophy degree may not be the most lucrative um, degree to get, and it may be very difficult to pay back the student loans that you get with that degree. So, you know, do a little bit of research, and if you need help with that, again, that's why I'm here. Shoot the QR code in the hallways, make an appointment, and we can talk about college and whether it's right for you, whether it's not right for you, and what your what are your what are your thoughts on, on your future? That's what we're here for. Okay. So what can you do to prepare for college? Let's get over here again. Where's my cursor? There we go. Bring this in. This is things that you can do to prepare for college. Again, it's the big future college board. All I did was go getting inside the classroom. It tells you what you can do, what kind of classes you can take, all kinds of things, access that you can have to get yourself ready to go for college, okay? Prepare to go to college, and if at the end of the four years here you decide you'd rather not go to college, nothing's hurt. You're good to go still wherever you wanna go, all right? So again, this is a great, a great resource if you would like to use that. Simply just go to that website and you're good to go. Other topics I wanna touch on before um, I let you go here. Check your email daily. I've had probably 15 to 20 kids to my office that we were trying to log into Google Classroom and I checked their emails with them and there was three to 400 unopened emails in their inbox. If you are not opening your email daily, then you are missing out on lots of things. I check my email 25 times a day, minimum. Even when I'm at home, I check it when I'm at home during commercials when I'm watching TV shows before I go to bed at night, I check my email because I don't want to miss important information. That's what you're going to have to get in the habit of doing because in the real world, once you graduate, communication is done through email. Now, by the time you graduate, maybe they'll have some kind of fancy way to check um, correspondence that's not email. But as of now, email is it, and that's how we communicate and stay in touch with people and get them to do what we would like them to do. Stay on top of your grades. Monitor your progress book. If you don't know how to get into progress book, shoot the QR code, come see me. I will help you get your progress book access. If you're in the PLP and you're a virtual student, all virtual, check your PLP platform. Click on the grades option and it will tell you how much progress you're making and where you stand grade wise up to the minute. Okay. If you don't know where you're standing, that's a problem because you're going to find out that sooner or later you'll be behind where you thought you were and then you're going to be playing catch up. We can't have that, okay? Keep the lines of communications open with your teachers, constant email communication. You can also request Zoom meetings with them and that will help you um, with the lines of communication. Teachers understand things happen, but as long as they know what's, ha what's happening, they'll be more likely to help you through those things. Your, your computer craps out on you or whatever it is, use your phone, send an email, and then maybe your teacher can extend a deadline if that's what the case is. So there's, there's things that communication can help. And if you don't communicate those things, your teachers would never know and therefore not give you the, maybe the break that you might need to finish a, an assignment that was lost because your computer hard drive crashed. Vanguard is an option for you guys. Several of you are already in Vanguard as, as freshmen. Sophomore year, you have the opportunity to go over there and learn a skilled trade. It's an amazing opportunity. I will be in the classrooms in February as long as I'm allowed to be, and we will schedule you for next year. And at that time, that's when I will explain how to apply to class, to take classes at Vanguard. Um, in February is when I normally come in. It's early spring, so it's actually kind of late winter when I come in to schedule you for sophomore year. Hopefully we can do that. Um, with me in the classroom, like I did last year when you were at FMS. Um, but, you know, if not, we'll, we'll figure a way out and figure out how to do that in a different, um, in a different avenue. And then lastly is this to-do list. The to-do list is something that I've put together to kind of 
give you an idea of what you should be doing here at Ross during your freshman year. And again, you're welcome to print this off or uh, take notes on this if you want so that you know what's going on. The Explore test, we don't even offer that anymore. So you don't have to worry about taking the Explore test. Reach your career um, interests. We have lots of uh, website on our school website and our uh, Ross Guidance website with lots of different websites that can help you prepare for your future. Do your academic best. Make sure you're doing that, okay? If you need study tips, if you need anything like that, come see me and I'll tell you. Ms. Blanton will be the sophomore counselor, but I am going to be coming in to do your scheduling in the spring, okay? So make sure you're um, ready for that. And then between ninth and 10th grade, get a summer job. Volunteer somewhere that you may want to be, if you want to be a vet, go to the vet and see if you can volunteer there doing some things. If you want to be a, a work in the medical field, go to the hospital and see if they're taking volunteers. Right now, I know volunteering is very difficult because uh, of the COVID, but um, by the summer, hopefully, you'll be able to get in and do some volunteering and, and that kind of stuff. Um, what we've prepared you for here at Ross, or what our, our goal is, if you, and I, tell, I usually say this at the beginning of my speech, but I'm saving it for the end at this one. Um, if you think of high school as a diving board, okay, and when you're at the end of that diving board, the more bouncy the board is, the further you can launch yourself off into the, into the pool. And what we're doing here at Ross, by, by giving you all of the experiences that you have, getting the good grades, getting involved in extracurricular activities, doing those types of things, makes that board good and bouncy by the end so that you can launch yourself off into whatever career you want. If you're getting Ds and Fs and barely squeaking by with 1.0 GPAs, you're not getting involved in extracurricular activities, you're not doing the things that we're recommending you to do, it's gonna be like when you get to the end of a high school, if you graduate, you'll be like standing on a concrete wall trying to jump off. You'll still make it into the pool, but you're not going to get as far into that pool, okay? So make sure you're doing the things that you're supposed to do as freshmen because everything builds. Your freshman year is your easiest, but it's also the hardest because there's more expectations than you've ever had before coming from the middle school. So make sure you're getting those things that you need to get done done ask questions when they need to be asked, stay in communication with your teachers, shoot the QR code in the hallways. If you wanna come and see me, I will be happy to bring you down here during a study hall before or after school, and we'll get you taken care of. I appreciate your time and thank you very much. Um, and I wish you the rest, the rest of the quarter. I wish you good luck. Thank you.